Well, hello everybody and welcome to MP, MTP Connect's uh, Ready Information Session. We'll be kicking off in about three minutes time. So thanks for joining us nice and early. Uh, so feel free to go and grab a tea or a coffee or whatever takes your fancy at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. And uh, we will be, uh, we'll see you again shortly. Thanks so much. Well, good afternoon and welcome to MTP Connect. My name is Libby Pierce and I will be your Zoom host for today. And I will now be handing over to the fabulous Jared Belcher to introduce the session and facilitate. So Jared, over to you, thank you. Thanks Libby. So firstly, welcome everyone today to the information session on the Ready Contestable Programs Round 2 or Redic Round 2. Firstly, I'd like to start today's session by acknowledging the traditional custodians on the land which we all meet today and pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders peoples joining us today. Moving on to some housekeeping. Uh, today's session, uh, will be help with the lovely Libby behind the scenes. So thanks for your help, Libby. Our comms team who will be tweeting and providing support on social media and also Dr. Rebecca Tunstall and Dr. Michelle Lowe who will be presenting today. So welcome and thanks for joining us. For the questions today, please enter the questions in the Q&A box, not in the chat box. You can submit with your name or submit anonymously by clicking the button. And if you have the same question as someone else, please upvote it and that takes it to the top and we'll be able to answer those questions first. Also today's uh, presentation will be recorded and published as a video on demand. We'll also publish the slides. So that saves you having to furiously write down the information that's on the slide or, and you can come back and listen to this uh, presentation in future. So now I'd like to move in to get to know a little bit about who's joining us today. We've got 38 participants currently online. So if you can just uh, start the poll and there's two questions. So the first is, where are you from? And the second one is what best describes you? And this will help for myself, uh, Beck and Michelle to tailor our information for the audience today.
Another okay. five or ten seconds. Yeah, we're, mm. they're coming through thick and fast. So thanks, everyone. And just a reminder, just to hit that submit button when you are ready. So I think we've captured everyone. So I'll just end the polling there and I'll just display those results for you. Okay, okay so there you go. Thanks for that. So we've uh, got one international person joining us today and a good spread from around Australia, except for Tasmania and the ACT. So hopefully we can improve on that next time and a range of different people here today. So thanks, thanks for that. So today's agenda, Dr. Rebecca Tunstall will give an overview on ready, and then I'll go through the skills gap analysis and reports and about the RFP. Dr. Michelle Lowe will uh, give an overview on the eligibility, and then uh, I'll go through the selection criteria. And we'll end today's with a question and answer session. So if you can please hold your questions to the end, we'll let you know the previous ready presentations and information sessions, we've answered all the questions and we intend to do that today, which, and the question and answer session, Michelle and I will be responding there. So now I'd like to pass across to Dr. Rebecca Tunstall. So Dr. Rebecca Tunstall is the Senior Director of Stakeholder Engagement at MTP Connect and also co-chair of the Ready Steering Committee. Rebecca has 13 years experience working for GSK in uh, clinical research and medical affairs um, and particularly focusing on oncology. So I'd like to hand across to you, Beck. Thanks so much, Jared, and it's great to be here and hello everyone. So just for those who are not as familiar with MTP Connect, we were formed in 2015 as part of the federal government's Department of Industry, Science, Energy and Resources Industry Growth Centre Initiative. We're one of six industry growth centres and we champion a sector-led approach to accelerating um, and boosting the rate of growth of Australia's medical technologies, biotechnologies and pharmaceutical ecosystems. We bring together all participants in the sector, whether they be small or large companies, researchers, industry associations, different levels of government, universities, investors and regulators to focus on four priority outcomes. And they are to increase collaboration and commercialization across the sector, improve management and workforce skills, which is particularly relevant to today's session. We also work to optimize the regulatory environment and improve access to global supply chains and international markets. And we do this in three ways. So we firstly, through delivering strategic funding through our Commonwealth programs. Secondly, we act as an independent voice because we're a not-for-profit independent organization with no membership. We're seen as a trusted voice in the sector and for advising government on policy or regulations, which may be barriers to growing the sector. And we also take direct action. So we deliver education events and support programs to build commercialization expertise and promote further collaboration um, and commercialization outcomes. So next slide, thank you. So I mentioned um, strategic funding um, that MTP Connect deploys into the sector. So we operate five distinct business units, one through the Department of Industry, Science, Energy and Resources, um, and four on behalf of the Department of Health and the Medical Research Future Fund. So overall, we're through these strategic initiatives, we're deploying more than $160 million of DISA and MRFF funding into the sector. So we've got the first program on the left, which is the Department of Industry, Science, Energy and Resources Growth Centre Initiative, where we've deployed $15.6 million um, to support 40 projects, and that's fully committed. We've also got the Biomed Tech Horizons program, which is an initiative to support innovative, innovative health technologies and drive discoveries towards proof of concept or beyond through to commercialization. Now this is largely deployed. We will be having a very small round, um, which will be coming out in the next few weeks. So um, take a look at that when that information comes out as well. We've also got the Biomedical Translation Bridge Program, which is nurturing the translation of new therapies, technologies and medical devices through to proof of concept stage. 
and that's got industry support as well. We've also got the READY program, which we'll be talking about today, and the Targeted Translation Research Accelerator program, which is a $47 million program um, for diabetes and cardiovascular disease, where we're supporting the establishment of two research centres, one for diabetes and one for cardiovascular disease, as well as supporting um, research projects through rounds of contestable funding as well. So just next slide, thank you. So in terms of the READY program, um, the READY initiative leverages the expertise of our research, training and industry partners to drive skills development and workforce training uh, through deployment of an integrated three pillar plan, as you can see from this slide. So it's funded through the Australian government's Medical Research Future Fund and uh, began rolling out last year in 2020, and it's a four year program. So as you can see from this slide, um, there's three pillars. The first one is around expansion of proven programs and we've got existing partners on board. And this is really to address some of the already known gaps in the sector. We've also got pillar two, which we'll be talking about a bit more today where we've undertaken a comprehensive skills gap analysis. And from there, uh, we're calling for new programs to address those skills gaps. Um, and then we've got the pillar three, which is industry placements, internships and fellowships. And so that's got the APR intern program as well as bridge and bridge tech programs. But I've certainly got the ready fellowship program, which has been the subject of other information sessions. So please do um, take a look at that as well. Um, in, oh, so Jared will actually talk about pillar two um, a bit more um, for this session. Thanks, Jared. So, in terms of the key focus of READY, the objectives are to provide researchers with a diverse range of experiences and exposure to entrepreneurism in medical technologies, biotechnology and pharmaceutical sectors. Um, it's also to develop meaningful and sustainable partnerships with MTP companies, universities, registered training and government entities that will form the foundation for delivery of a variety of joint training, placement exchange and mentorship opportunities. Now the outcomes of the Ready Contestable program um, are aimed at strengthening Australia's success in terms of translation and commercialization um, of health and medical research and expanding the capacity and capability of the research community to undertake translation of health and medical research across the value chain. Now, when we talk about the value chain, um, it's been recently highlighted in the modern manufacturing strategy, SMILE curve. And this includes pre-production activities um, such as research and development and clinical development, um, production and manufacturing, logistics and distribution, um, and product marketing, promotion and sales elements as well. So it's really looking at the pre-production, production and post-production activities. And the READY initiative is focusing on developing an industry MTP workforce across that value chain. So pre-production, production and post-production phases of the advanced manufacturing cycle. And that certainly needs to be underpinned through understanding the skills and workforce gaps, workforce gaps um, to be able to address that as well and support the sector. So with that, I'll pass on to Jared to speak more about the skills gap analysis and this request for proposals. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Bec. So I'll just share my screen. Great, I'll just get you to reverse that. Thanks. Right. Pop that into presentation mode. Yep. Thanks, Jared. But the correct one now? Or is that it... is perfect, thank you. Okay, great. Thanks, Libby. I always have trouble with that. <laughs> thanks. So, so thanks. So we're focusing on the round two call for proposals. So Reddit 2.0. Uh, this opened last week. The guidelines were uh, were published on the 10th of March and it closes on the 9th of 9th of April. So also on the 10th of March, we published the second report, which is a root and branch and that skills gap analysis. So we published an interim report on skills gaps in November and then held REDIC 1.0. The second report has guided or driven the release of REDIC 
There will be further opportunities for REDIC as we go through and understand more about the skills gaps now that we have the full report released. And we're looking for more and more partners. So we're looking to fill up all those question marks on the diagram on the right hand side of, of the page. So there will be more opportunities for people focusing on other skills gaps that have been found in, in the second report. So for the skills gap analysis, we're the request for proposals. There are guidelines. Today, we're not trying to regurgitate the guidelines. The expectation is that you can read them. It's about adding colour to the guidelines and providing some meaningful feedback that you can use when you're developing your high quality proposals. So Ready 2.0, we encourage uh, eligible companies to, to apply for this. And this is universities, TAFEs, RTOs, industry associations, uh, companies that have a training focus, companies, MTP companies that have a specialist skills in this area and can deliver worthwhile training. We're looking for those companies to submit um, and to lead proposals for, for this. And we're looking to fill two skills gaps or close two skills gaps through this RFP process. The first is identifying the unmet market need in clinical context. And the second is the ability to secure investment, funding and industry collaboration. So I'd like to provide a little bit of background on the two areas that we're looking to, to close the gap. For the identifying the unmet market need in clinical context, this is a two day short course to be delivered nationally around Australia in multiple states. Uh, the course is for researchers, startups and spin-offs. And the feedback we got when we were developing the skills gap analysis was that some of the products that have been developed don't have a real clinical need or they integrate unevenly with the clinical workflow. It makes them difficult for the commercialization to happen. There's also a misalignment of, of products with the end users. So we want the researchers, the startup spin-ups, talking to the end user earlier in, in the development process, but also assessing the true scale of the market. It's no good saying, oh, this, is, this will uh, help obesity and obesity is worth X billion dollars to the Australian economy each year. It needs to be meaningful. Um, assessment of the true market of what your approach can actually improve. And this, our main focus is again, success in commercialization and then earlier improving human health outcomes because we're able to get products to market in a more streamlined way, a better utilization of resources, and then they have the ability to impact the market. For this course, uh, all modalities, so digital, medical devices and therapeutics all need to be included in the same, in this one course. There's not different courses for each of the three different modalities. It needs to be in a single course. The second area we're going to focus on is the ability to secure investment funding and industry collaboration or specifically delivering on your funding strategy. So, this course is a one day course, again, delivered nationally. So delivered in each state. And it's really about targeting your ask for different audiences, tailoring your pitch. So understanding the motivations of investors uh, and adapting your communication style. So we really wanna see a deep dive into the motivations and really see practical strategies and examples that the uh, participants and the students will work through on the day. And this has, a, again, very, very much, this is at the earliest stage of commercialization. And the reason that this is such a, a big issue is the mix, misdirection of time and resource. And also it's slowing down, getting products to market and impacting the human health outcomes. So they're the two areas that we're seeking in this round. And now I'd like to hand across to Dr. Michelle Lowe to talk about the timeline of the of Reddit 2.0 and also the eligibility for this program. Across to you, Michelle. Great, thank you, Jared. And hello, everyone. Uh, I'll be speaking on the schedules uh, today. And what Jared mentioned earlier is that it opened last week, Wednesday, 
and we invite applicants to submit their proposals on Smarty Grants by the 9th of April, 5 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. And for those of you who are in Western Australia, that will be 3 p.m. Assessments will occur in April and May and we'll be notifying the successful and unsuccessful applicants in May. With the successful applicants, um, we'll, as Jared mentioned, uh, they'll de deliver the courses nationwide um, and they will be expected to roll out by December 31st, uh, 2021. Uh, reporting will be required throughout the year, and there will be a re final report required in January 2022. Uh, for the guidelines, they give most of the information, so you can please refer to the guidelines. Uh, so this section, I'll just speak to three key topics. Uh, first being the applicant. The lead applicant uh, will be the one that will be the contracting entity with MTP Connect, and they should have an ABN and we welcome partnerships. Uh, for costs, uh, last time for Ready 1.0, we actually didn't give a price cap, but we are now providing a price cap in the uh, Ready 2.0. Please refer to the guidelines for the price cap for the two courses that Jared did uh, mention earlier on. And you'll see in the guidelines that there are a minimum amount of participants, about 10 for each course, but in the guidelines, there are different maximum amount of participants. And so when you are proposing your course, uh, please propose the best value uh, for your course based and the maximum price that is the price cap that's based on the maximum amount of participants. So we're looking for the best value course on that price. And so you need to put your course um, finances on that into the financial template, which is provided with our documents on the website. Please submit um, your proposals on Smarty Grants and uh, Smarty Grants, you can register and there are help files available. Jared and I are on hand to help and guide you um, on the day of applications. Uh, please don't leave it for the last 10 minutes because that might be a bit tricky, but we'll be able to help you uh, beforehand. Uh, when you submit, you'd need to submit two documents, the first being the technical proposal, and that will consist of the main body of the report, which is limited to 20 pages, and which also will have the provider fact sheet, which is a template also found on our website. Uh, together, your technical proposal will also have appendices attached to it, and that will be submitted as one document. Your financial proposal is also submitted and there you'd stick to using the financial template I mentioned earlier. Uh, so when generating your proposal, uh, Jared will now give you some tips on what our assessors are looking for in terms of the selection criteria. So over to you, Jared. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, so I'm now going to go through each of the selection criteria and provide a little bit of colour about what the assessors are looking for each time. It is it is in the guidelines and uh, my intention is not to repeat what's in the guidelines, it's to actually give you feedback based on the initial round of Reddick 1.0. So the first is the understanding and experience. Firstly, we want to see that you understand the topic and the best way to understand the topic is to read the skills gap report relating to to the appropriate skills gap and understand the, the topics that want to be covered, the, the market, who, who is the user and what impact it has on the sector and, and how this training will then impact and improve the MTP sector. Also, if you have consortium members, please, in this section, please include what the what the, each consortium partner is bringing to the proposal and, and to your bid and a clear guidelines who's responsible for what and what they're bringing to, to the project. The experience and also the QMS. Uh, in the last one, there was lots of motherhood statements. Yes, we've got 10 years experience, but there was no detail. Our assessors are looking for detail. So just be aware of motherhood statements in the proposal and provide specific examples about your experience, how that you're the best, who your clients are, and why you're the, 
the obvious choice for this. The next uh, section is the approach to address the skills gaps. This is worth 35%, so the largest section of the, uh, of the uh, proposal. Uh, and so should be the largest in terms of uh, words or, or page limits. Last time, the uh, course details, so day one, nine o'clock, this person's presenting. Then after that, there's a reflection time or, or conducting activities. We want it to that sort of level that you're giving us a very much an hour by hour description of what's happening, who's in charge, of each section and what the goals and outcomes are. And that was done really well last time we thought. A uh, point to address though is we're looking to develop skills and knowledge. So having 16 hours of, of lectures isn't what will score well here. We wanna say, yes, you've got the knowledge and then to the practical application, how to do that. So using case studies or a range of, of other different things. Also what we wanna see here and this helps with the value for money assessments as well, is where you're going to deliver the program. Are you partnering with universities and you'll deliver it in universities? Are you partnering with um, an industry association and you'll deliver it from their offices? Are you going to be hiring a hotel and delivering it in the conference room at a hotel? Give us that information so then we can look at and make the consideration in terms of a, a value for money because where it is delivered actually impacts on getting the right students to attend, the right uh, bums on seats. Also, thirdly, for your target market, please, it's not a full marketing document, but please provide us an outline on how you're going to reach the target market. It's no good just saying that I have a database of 10,000 people. Tell us what that database of 10,000 people is and how they're the right people that you're going to get the message through to and if you're going to do it through your normal channels of marketing if you're doing edms try and add some some information about there because what we want to see is the courses filled in each state we think that there's thousands of people that these courses will be of interest to and we want to make sure that we do fill the uh, courses in each state so the marketing is an important piece of this here then the team capabilities, the second most important, that's worth 30%. Uh, in Redic 1.0, there were some fantastic uh, subject matter experts, lecturers, facilitators, whatever you want to call them in, in your proposal, but there were some fantastic people there. Make sure in the body that you do justice to them. Provide a little bit of a, a paragraph or two on the skills they have and why it's important and how they their skills impact what they're going to do and be very clear on, on what their role is in terms of this. It's very heavily weighted towards your the people standing up in front of the class, uh, but also things, your project coordinator who's looking at logistics, uh, booking venues, ensuring catering, things like that as well. It's also very important. They're rated quite highly. It's good to have your project director who provides high level support in, but they're not really scored at the same level as the rest of the uh, people. So please allocate your um, word count and page count accordingly to help you score the best for this section. And then finally, the, the value for money. As uh, Michelle said, we have given a price limit or price cap in this, in Reddit 2.0, and that's for the maximum number of people, the cost that MTP connect through the Ready program is willing to pay for, for the training, but we want it based on the maximum number of people, not the minimum, because we do expect that to fill up these courses. Also, I wanna take some time to spend on your financial risk appetite. So the financial risk appetite from our point of view for this is that your confidence that you're going to fill the courses up to the maximum attendance. So if you have, and when you're submitting your financial proposal, you do it in two pots. One is essentially the cost for the first 10 people, which is a fixed amount, and then a cost per, per person on top of that for extra people up until the maximum number. If you have a very high cost per person for the first 10 and a low cost per person for the remainders, you're not incentivized or encouraged to really fill up the courses 
to the maximum number. And it's also saying to the assessors that you're not confident that will occur. So if you, however, you have a, a smaller cost for your first 10 and a larger cost for you for the next people that you're attending, it shows that you're backing yourself in to fill up the courses. And we want to see the courses fill so fill so we can uh, impact the most number of people. And so that will score better than having a, um, a low financial risk appetite. So that's what we mean by financial risk appetite. And when you're looking at your financial proposal, please keep this in mind and use this as a chance to show the assessors that you're confident that you're going to be able to fill up the course. So I'd like to hand back to Michelle Lowe, please. Great, thanks Jared for giving some tips. And um, yeah, so we've come to the end of the presentation. So now you can please start typing your uh, questions into the Q&A box, which is at the bottom of the Zoom screen. And just while you're typing your questions, as you leave the meeting today, uh, there will be a survey link that will pop up in your browser. Uh, please give feedback for us to improve. It will take less than a minute and it's uh, gonna be a great help for us. Um, yes, yeah, just in terms of next steps, the video on demand will be coming soon. So keep an eye on the MTP Connect socials and website for these. And the questions from today will also be written up as an FAQ document. And together with the slide deck, we'll upload these with the Ready.20 documents, which are the guidelines and the financial and provider fact sheets uh, templates. All questions will also be uh, emailed uh, um, emailed in, they will be added to the FAQ document. Okay, great. So now we're getting some questions in for ready round point two. Here we go. Uh, will the st two streams being evaluated independently like the last round? Uh, Jared? Yes. Are you on mute? <laughs> Sorry, I'll just unmute myself. Thanks. Uh, good question. Yes. Uh, these are two separate proposals. So Therefore, uh, they're evaluated independently. The same company or the same organisation may be awarded one, but that's not a necessarily. They're, uh, necessarily, they'll be independently uh, assessed. Great. Um, here's a, a question, which is like by three upvotes. Do these training programs need to be delivered in person or is there an option to include a virtual component? Okay, thank you. Thanks, Michelle. Yeah. There is an option to include a virtual component, but we do want, we see a lot of the value of these courses as networking. So we do want some of it at least face-to-face -face, uh, delivery, but we are happy with a, a blended, but a part of it must be face-to-face -face because of the high value of the networking uh, in these courses. Great. Uh, yeah, I can answer this one. What is the maximum number of participants? So for proposal one, the maximum number of participants will be uh, 20 per course. And then for the proposal two, the number of maximum participants will be 15 per course. Uh, next question from Peter. Uh, could these programs possibly part, be part of a university structure program that incorporates industry partners? Um, good question. They need to be standalone courses that we can offer and ready as funding throughout. So uh, yes, you may, uh, it may be part of a university course, but we need to offer them as standalone courses uh, to the general public that are fun that is funded by ready, but you may have these courses already for, through your university courses and that's okay. We just need them offered directly through this. In terms of the cohorts uh, and the students attending, you'll see that we have a one to 15 ratio. We don't want to exceed that ratio or a one to 20 ratio. We don't want to exceed that. In round one, we had up to 25 students in the course or each course. We wanna keep it low ratios so there can be meaningful interactions with the facilitators, with the lecturers, with the subject matter experts. And so, it's, we don't want classes of 30 or 40 together attending this. We want it small, smaller ones. So you couldn't run your, have this as an extra to your university course and invite everyone in because that's defeating uh, the purpose of the small, smaller student to, to trainer ratios. Yep. 
Um, and a question from Nicholas, can you provide answers to these questions in, in addition to the presentation recording? Yes, absolutely, Nicholas, thanks. We'll generate a FAQ document and we'll upload it to the website. Another one from uh, Nicholas, how was the price cap calculated? Okay. The price cap calculated, we had feedback from Ready 1.0 about the cost per day per student, those there. So these were included to, to include a price that we thought was reasonable for and offered good money to value to the Australian taxpayers that are essentially funding these courses through the MRFF. So there was science in, into it. I don't want to go into every, um, every little bit, but there was very reasonable based on the uh, prices we had from Reddick 1.0. And that's why we're now offering them and providing this guidance in Reddick 2.0. Uh, question from Janelle, does it need to be two days in a row or two days in total? Uh, uh, up to the provider to, to do that. If you think you can get a better outcome by splitting the two days, that's fine. If you think you'll get a better outcome, more bums on seats uh, for one of another term uh, by having it two days uh, consecutively, that's okay. Uh, if you want to deliver half days, the equivalent in half days, that's also a, another method. It's up to you. We're being quite flexible for that. But whatever you come up with, please put a rationale for our assessors uh, for in section two, so we can see your thoughts and why you believe that this is the, the best way to, to impact these skills gaps. Um, yeah, can you please confirm when round one applicants will receive feedback? Okay, uh, round one uh, notifications will be happening this month, an announcement. Um, the round one applicants have been notified already of the outcomes and they will be receiving feedback this month as well. Uh, from Melissa, in the financial templates, are you wanting a participant contribution to incentivize their participation in the courses? I, I can say yes, but Jared? Yeah, we are. And what we're looking to do is to have an amount that if people register, they then turn up. The worst thing is to have people register and then the, the class hut to be only half full. So yes, we do want a participant. Uh, co-contribution and we want you to advise us on what you believe that should be uh, but we will negotiate a final price in our in where in the contracting phase a uh, question from jennifer can you clarify that reddick 2.0 will not be awarded based on building on existing capabilities i.e jared mentioned first pillar would be delivered by existing partners uh, yes, this is an independent um, standalone. That's why we use the term standalone uh, delivery modules. We are looking for the best proposals. The best proposals will, will be funded. Thanks, Jared. Uh, those are some of the questions. Yeah, we've wrapped up our questions over here. Uh, if anyone has any more to type in, um, we can wait a few moments. Sometimes someone asks, um, is, is there an expression of interest required for this application? Uh, no, it's a one-step process. Uh, we're trying to keep it straightforward. We're trying to get the ready programs started as soon as possible. That will improve the MTP sector. So the, we're doing a, a one-step process and we believe that a one-step process is fair and reasonable for, for the ready programs. Um, oh yeah, for the risk assessment, how much detail do you need it to be in? The risk assessment is really a price. So it's the value, the numbers you put down into the financial proposal. We will then do the appropriate calculations, but the uh, we, we do want to see a, uh, you encouraging yourselves, motivating yourselves to, to fill the courses. Uh, and that's through that those numbers that you put put down there. Right. So it seems to be no more uh, questions coming in. Uh, yeah. 
think you've been very thorough over there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So, well then, um, thank you to our guests. Oh, well, one more, one more questions. Here we go. Uh, thank you, Peter. Would the courses generate a certificate or credential? If you have that, and that's part of your value proposition, yes. But to make this program open to uh, different providers uh, and to make sure we have the uh, most applicable courses and the best courses run, we're not making it mandatory. But if you have that as part of your value proposition and people can walk away with the credential or a micro-credential, then uh, that will be favourably reviewed by the assessment panel. But we're not it's definitely not 100% required. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Great session from Peter. Thanks, Peter. <laughs> right. So if that's it all for today, I'd like to thank uh, the guests for taking their time out to join us um, and hear about Reddit 2.0. And would also like to thank uh, Dr. Rebecca Tunstall for giving her insight into Ready and MT Connect. And also for Libby um, for background ops and for Jared to giving background on Ready. We'd also like to thank the comms teams for tweeting away, Caro and Shannon. Um, yeah, so again, the next steps, the video on demand will be coming soon. So keep an eye on the MTP Connect socials and website for these. And also um, on the previous slide that was popped up while we were doing Q&A, subscribe to our newsletter to find out any upcoming opportunities from MTP Connect and Ready, which will be um, a great way to hear about news. Thank you again for everyone for joining us and uh, please complete the feedback form as you leave the session. And it only takes one minute to complete and this will help us to plan for future events. Uh, that's it for today. Jar and I are always on hand to answer your questions through the email listed on the slide. Thanks. Wonderful. Thanks, Michelle, Jared and Rebecca. Thanks to all of you for joining us today and we hope to connect with you again soon. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Bye.